Welcome back to Untested Builds, where you figure out to play as your favorite fictional characters in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Subscribe and tap the bell to be notified whenever we post a new video. Today is Skyrim Day, so to celebrate 10 years, we're beating Todd Howard to the punch and importing Skyrim directly into Pathfinder 2nd Edition and building the Dovahkiin. So let's get right to the goals for this build. For starters, Skyrim is a pretty open-ended game with lots of ways to build the exact same stealth archer from your first 100 playthroughs. Second, even after an entire decade, Skyrim still has quite a few bugs and exploits that can be used for some cheesy effects. And last, we're the prophesized chosen one, everyone knows that. Well, except for us at the start, I suppose. But the GM is going to give us some secret spice after an early boss fight, I can just feel it. For our stats, we're using the rules outlined on page 20 of the core rulebook or in the link to the archives of Nethys below where literally all of the Pathfinder rules can be found. Yes, D&D people, it's a legit site and yes, it's actually free to use. Everything starts to 10 and depending on our ancestry background and class, we take different boosts and flaws to reach our level 1 stats. Yes, D&D people, in 2E we basically get to choose our stats and yes, we can always have an 18 in our best ability score at level 1. For us, that's going to be 18 strength since there's no armor restrictions in Skyrim, so there shouldn't be any for us either. 14 constitution, no one has enough HP to just tank repeated dragon breath to the face, but that hasn't stopped us from trying. 14 intelligence, in spite of the amount of time we spend outdoors, we do a surprising amount of book learning. 10 wisdom, the battle music is a dead giveaway that an encounter has started, but sometimes it never turns off and other times it comes on when nothing is around. And 10 charisma, I know this speech skill exists, but we're still basically a silent protagonist. For our skills, we're legendary in Arcana, thanks to all of the expository lore dumps we just happen to be in the room for. Legendary crafting, because why rely on random loot and shop inventory when we can just make whatever we want. Legendary stealth for that legendary sneak. Master thievery for some creative pathing through dungeons and a bit of income on the side. And train in a bunch of other things, but most importantly, deception. It's not about the lies you tell, it's the truths you omit. For our ancestry, obviously the dragonborn can be any race. Human, elf, lizard folk, and orc are obviously on the table, but Danfear and Beastkin to get vampy and wolfy respectively if that's more your inclination. Azerketi and Halfling are a thing too if you're really up on your Elder Scrolls lore, but I usually play a Nord because I get enough microaggressions in real life, and after all, Skyrim is for the Nords. Winter Touch humans gain cold resistance equal to half their level and treat environmental cold effects as one step less severe. In true Bethesda fashion, we'll take the prisoner background for training in stealth and the experienced smuggler feat. So the lowest our GM can roll on a stealth check to conceal an object is 10. 15 once we have master stealth proficiency and we automatically succeed if we're legendary, so guards can never just randomly suss us out for carrying a bunch of stolen loot. For our ancestry feat, we'll choose our standing stone with astrology to spend an action up to three times per day. And the next time we would attempt a skill check, we roll a D8 and on a six, seven or we gain a plus two circumstance bonus to the check, a plus one bonus if we roll a three, four, or five, and a minus one penalty if we happen to roll a one. For our class, we'll lock in as the only class that can reliably wield any weapon they pick up. Level one fighters gain the attack of opportunity reaction to make a melee strike against an enemy in our reach that uses a manipulate move or ranged attack action. They also gain the shield block reaction to use our raised shield to block an amount of incoming damage from a physical attack equal to our shield's hardness. You can obviously use whatever weapons you want, but we're going for a sword and board style build here. For our class feat, power attack is basically the only interesting thing you can do with melee attacks in Skyrim. We spend two actions to make a melee strike that counts as two attacks for determining our multi-attack penalty, but in exchange, we deal an additional weapon die of damage. That bonus increases to two extra dice at level 10 and three extra dice at level 18. That's all well and good, but we're supposed to be the Dragonborn, a mortal with the soul of a dragon. Either way, that sounds like a soul seed to me. Soul seeds are completely up to GM Fiat, so as to what you get and win, but we're going to follow the guide for relics on page 95 of the Game Mastery Guide, or in the link below, because yes, all of the rules, including the ones from the GM Guide, are free on Nethys. We're taking the Soul Aspect Minor Gift Force Blast to stand in for the OG Dragon Shout Unrelenting Force. We basically get a spell that we can cast as often as we want, spending two actions to deal 1d6 force damage to a creature within 30 feet based on a fortitude save. Starts off small like Foos, but we add a d6 to the damage every other level to eventually get full Foos Road Die action. Some races start the game with spells, but Nords gotta get all their magic from books. The Wizard Dedication gives us training in Arcana and two Arcane Cantrips. Produce Flame is our flame spell to make a spell attack roll either in touch range or within 30 feet to deal 1d4 plus our intelligence modifier of fire damage and an additional 1d4 persistent fire damage on a crit. An Electric Arc for the Shock spell to force a reflex save on up to two creatures, dealing 1d4 plus our intelligence modifier to creatures who fail. For our skill feat, Arcane Sense lets us cast first level detect magic as an innate arcane spell so we can always be aware of nearby magic. And as we increase our arcana proficiency, eventually learn the highest level ongoing magic in the school of the spell as well. 
Fear spells don't work on the Dragonborn, so level 3 fighters gain bravery to increase our will saves to expert proficiency, and whenever we succeed on a will save against a fear effect, we gain the critical success results instead. And whenever we would gain the frightened condition, even through all of that, we reduce the value of the condition by 1. The Nords may talk a big xenophobic game, but their culture on Tamriel is literally built on the top of the bones of the most advanced civilization ever. The adopted ancestry general feat lets us choose a common ancestry and allows us to gain access to their ancestry feats for going dwarf since they have the cool armor, weapons, and trinkets and stuff. We pick up some basic arcana for cantrip expansion to prepare an additional two cantrips every day. We've got the flames and the shock spell, so it only makes sense to go grab Ray of Frost to make a spell attack roll on a target within 120 feet, dealing 2d4 plus our intelligence modifier of cold damage and imposing a minus 10 foot speed penalty on a crit. And of course, we know about ward spells. The shield spell raises a magical shield, giving us a plus two bonus to AC for a round, and we can use it to perform a shield block reaction against mundane attacks as well as magic missile, respectively. The best part is that if you are a two-handed weapon fighter or an archer, you can still use the shield spell even with your hands full. For our skill feat, alchemical crafting lets us spend our downtime making whatever manner of tonics, salves, poultices, and potions we've acquired a recipe for. Level 5 fighters gain fighter weapon mastery for master proficiency in simple and martial weapons in a weapon group of their choice, and we gain expert proficiency in advanced weapons in that group. This is the pick up any weapon and use it build, but that doesn't mean you won't be a bit better with weapons you use often. For our ancestry feat, Eye for Treasure gives us a plus one circumstance bonus on all recall knowledge crafting checks, and we can gain the crafter's appraisal feat for free to use our crafting when we attempt to identify magic on a magic item, so we can always know what divine, daedric, or primal items we come across actually do. Our Dragonborn gifts get more powerful too with another minor gift. We're mixing and matching and taking something from the dragon aspect this time around because Dragonborn kind of do the soul thing and the dragon thing. Breath of Dragons lets us force a reflex save within a 30 foot cone or an 80 foot line, dealing 4d6 energy damage based on the type of dragon our seed is from. Technically, dragons in Skyrim have either frost or fire breath, but you already have a fire, electricity, and cold cantrip, so I wouldn't blame you for wanting a green dragon soul for some poison damage instead. At level 6, we'll take basic wizard spell casting for a first and second level spell slot. Animate Dead is Baby's first conjuration spell, which is weird since basically every culture on Mundus hates necromancy. We can spend three actions to create a level negative one undead creature that we can sustain as a minion for up to a minute, and invisibility to become undetected to all creatures for 10 minutes or until we make a hostile action. For our skill feat, Shadow Mark ups our sneak game a bit further. Whenever we're attempting to avoid notice while following a specific target, we can give that target a minus two circumstance penalty to their perception DC to notice us, and they also take that penalty to their initiative if an encounter would start. The penalty increases to a minus three if we have Master Stealth, and a minus four if we have Legendary Stealth, which we will. Level seven fighters gain Battlefield Surveyor for Master Perception Proficiency and a plus two circumstance bonus to perception checks to initiative, and weapon specialization for an additional three flat damage with our master weapon attacks and an additional two damage with our expert strikes. We'll take the toughness feat to increase our max HP by an amount equal to our level and reduce the DC of our recovery checks to nine plus our dying condition value. 300 HP is a decent amount of health for a Dovahkiin. It's pretty good for an adventure on Galarian too. Level eight basic wizard spellcasters can cast their level spells. Fireball is the quintessential destruction spell no matter what sword and board fantasy world you're in. Dealing 66 fire damage to creatures in a 20 foot burst within 500 feet based on a basic reflex save. We'll take the swift sneak feat so we can move at our full movement speed instead of half while sneaking. If you haven't noticed, we sneak a lot and we have a bit of a penchant for destruction. Perfect candidate for Dark Brotherhood recruitment, the Assassin Dedication gives us the March for Death ability. We can spend three actions to designate a target we can see or hear as a mark, giving us a plus two circumstance bonus to perception checks to seek them and deception checks to feint against them. In addition, our weapons gain the Backstabber and Deadly D6 traits when we're attacking our mark. Only if they're agile or finesse weapons though. That's not that big of a restriction, that's still like 100 different weapons. Level 9 fighters gain Juggernaut for Master 42 saves and critical success results on regular successes, and combat flexibility to gain an extra fighter feat of 8th level or lower that we can switch out during our daily preparations. We haven't taken like any fighter feats since level 1, so take whatever extra perk you want every morning. This is honestly the best part about multi-classing fighters. For our ancestry feat, multi-talented gives us a multi-class dedication of our choice. We're already an assassin, wizard, and warrior, so why not be a thief too? 
The rogue dedication gives us training in two skills of our choice and the surprise attack class feature. So if we ever roll deception or stealth for initiative, all creatures who haven't acted yet before us are flat footed to us. We also get a free skill feat. We'll take magical crafting. So unlike in vanilla Skyrim, we can actually make our own scrolls and staves. What kind of game has extensive crafting system, but no way to make more of the actually useful consumables? No, no, I'm getting bogged down in the details again. We just have to trust in the infinite wisdom of Todd Howard. Crafting scrolls would have been broken it was already broken with just alchemy. We're getting another soul seed gift here. None of the major gifts are really in character. So we'll just grab another minor one. Draconic resistance gives us a plus one circumstance bonus to AC against attacks from dragons. And we also gain resistance equals to half our level to a type of damage corresponding with our dragon soul type. We already have frost resistance from our Nordic blood. So probably a good idea to go with electricity fire or that poison resistance we talked about earlier. We're going to spend some time grinding our skills with skill mastery to increase one of our expert skills to master and one of our trained skills to expert proficiency, expert thievery and master crafting. We also gain a skill feat for free from either of those skills. We'll grab inventor so that we can spend downtime to make new formulas for items instead of needing to buy them or find them. We also get another skill feat that we'll use for pickpocket to steal upon a closely guarded object without taking the usual minus five penalty. And once we're a master in thievery, we can attempt to steal from a creature in combat as well by spending two actions and taking the usual minus five. Level 11 fighters gain fighter expertise for expert fighter class CC and armor expertise for expert proficiency in all armor types. For our general feat, fast recovery lets us gain twice the usual amount of hit points from resting, and we also reduce the stages of diseases and poisons we contract by an additional stage whenever we successfully pass their fortitude checks. Wait an hour to get your HP back, then go pray at a shrine to remove all your diseases. The specialty crafting feat gives us a plus two circumstance bonus to our choice of a specific type of crafting. I'm taking alchemical crafting because failing to make a batch of something is completely awful. Or you can go blacksmithing for weapons and armor or stone cutting or woodworking if you're gonna like, you know, build your own house or something. Personally, I just buy or mod my own house straight into the game, but everyone has their own playstyle. We'll take expert wizard spell casting for a fourth level spell slot. Stone skin gives us resistance five to all physical damage except out of man time for 20 minutes. But whenever we would take bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing damage, we reduce the remaining duration by one minute. Level 13 fighters gain weapon legend, increasing our proficiency in all simple and martial weapons to master, all advanced weapons to expert, and we increase our proficiency in a weapon group of our choice to legendary with the simple and martial weapons in that group and to master with the advanced weapons. We'll take the stone bones ancestry feat to reduce an incoming critical hit to only a normal hit as a reaction by passing a DC 17 flat check because Nords are just that tough. We'll gain another minor gift from our soul seed. The soul puppet ability is basically anime dead again, except it auto heightens to half of our level and we can still sustain the spell as normal by spending an action on each of our turns. Level 14 expert wizard spellcasters gain a fifth level spell slot. Wall of Ice creates a one foot thick, 60 feet long, 10 foot high wall of ice. Each section has 40 hit points and if it's destroyed by anything but fire, it creates an area of difficult terrain that deals 2d6 cold damage to any creature attempting to pass through. We'll take the quick unlock feat so we can use the pick a lock activity in one action instead of two. And for our class feat, Assassinate lets us deal that massive sneak attack damage we've all been missing from the build so far. We can spend two actions to make a strike against a foe we have marked for death as long as we're unnoticed by them to deal an additional 66 precision damage on hit and they also have to make a 42 save against our class dc and if they critically fail they die immediately level 15 fighters gain evasion for master reflex saves and critical success results and regular successes greater weapon specialization for eight additional damage with our legendary attacks improved flexibility gives us an extra free fighter feat that we can take during our daily preparations but this one can be up to level 14 and we can use our eighth level or lower flexibility feat as a prerequisite for this one and for our general feat the fleet feat gives us an extra five feet of movement speed we've been clunking around in heavy armor long enough and i kind of want 25 speed again level 16 expert wizard spell casters can cast six level spells teleport is our fast travel we can take ourselves and up to four allies to a location within 100 miles that we're aware of takes 10 minutes to cast so probably won't be able to get this off while enemies are nearby. We'll take the impeccable crafter feat so whenever we successfully craft an item using our specialty crafting, we get a critical success instead. 
For our class feat, Arcane Breath gives us an additional first, second, third, and fourth level spell slot. We've got Fear and Confusion for some hilarious illusion spells. Summon Elemental so that we can make some Atronachs in addition to Raising the Dead. And Paralyze to completely incapacitate a foe, assuming that they are low enough level, of course. Level 17 fighters gain Armor Mastery for Master Proficiency in all armor types. For Ancestry feat, Heroic Presence gives us the effects of 6 level Zealous Conviction that we can fire off once per day to give up to 10 willing creatures 12 temporary hit points and a plus 2 status bonus to will saves against mental effects as their rational minds are overcome by the pure awe of standing next to the Chosen One. Speaking of Chosen, we'll gain our final gift from our Soul Seed. Soul Magic gives us the effects of Divine Inspiration once per day that we can use to restore one of our 6th level or lower spell slots in one action. We'll take Unified Theory to use our Arcana proficiency in place of Nature, Occultism, or Religion for any skill checks or DCs that relate to those respective magical traditions. And we'll use that Legendary Arcana for Master Wizard spellcasting so we can gain access to a 7th level spell slot. Time Beacon lets us drop a quick save right before we do any unscrupulous actions. Basically, we spend an action to set up a temporary anchor, and until the end of our turn, if we want to, we can go back in time to that point. We also get another 5th level spell slot, Glimmer of Charm is another illusion spell. We force a will save on all creatures within a 20 foot emanation of us, giving them a higher disposition towards us if they fail, and also preventing them from taking any hostile actions against us. Level 19 fighters gain Versatile Legend, increasing our fighter class DC to Master, our proficiency in all simple and martial weapons as well as on our strikes to Legendary, and our proficiency in all advanced weapons to Master. And as is tradition for fighters on this channel, we'll take Candy Acumen for our general feat for Master will saves. Level 20 Master Wizard spellcasters can cast 8th level spells. Deluge is our Call Storm. A torrential downpour starts in a 40 foot burst within 500 feet, downing all flying creatures within the area and forcing reflex saves on creatures on the ground, potentially dealing bludgeoning damage to all creatures affected. Chain Lightning deals 8d12 electricity damage based on a reflex save to a creature. Then, as long as they didn't critically succeed, the lightning jumps to another creature within 30 feet. And if they fail their reflex save, it continues again, dealing damage to all affected. For our final skill feat, Legendary Sneak allows us to hide or sneak without the need of cover or concealment, and we also gain the benefit of avoiding notice during exploration, even when we're using an exploration activity other than avoiding notice. And for our Capstone feat, Boundless Reprisals gives us an additional reaction at the start of each of our enemy's turns that we can use during that turn to proc Shield Block, Attack of Opportunity, and Stone Bones as many times as we need to. But now that we're level 20, let's go over the pros and cons of this build. For starters, we are super versatile. Between our massive spell list, proficiency in basically every weapon, and skill proficiency in just about everything, we're going to be able to slot into pretty much any team that we want to play this in. Second, crafting builds are awesome, especially when you can make any alchemical item and any magical item, and you can always make sure you have just exactly what your party is going to need. And with over 300 HP, resistance to physical damage, and resistance to two different types of energy damage, it's going to take a long time for you to go down in a fight. But now for the cons, you don't actually have enough actions to be able to do everything. We didn't even grab haste, mostly because it's not in character. And a lot of the spells that are in character are incapacitation effects or summon effects, which aren't very good if you're supposed to be spending your actions walking up and hitting things. Thanks for tuning in to another build. Subscribe if you haven't already and join the Patreon if you want to support the channel directly like these lovely folks. And until next time, take care, stay safe and play more Pathfinder.